Hello YouTube, this is Gorn22 here, back with another 100 point squadron build for Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures. Tonight we focus back on the Imperial Faction, and before I start I'd like to point out that this build exactly isn't my build, it's actually my roommate's that he constructed um, in order to counter some of the um, the builds that I have. And um, the way I see it, he's constructed this build pretty damn well. Um, before this particular build, he made a prototype build that involved uh, two TIE Bombers, which I believe were Captain Jonas and a Gamma Squadron. And after a little bit of tinkering, he found that the best ship, he found that a single TIE Defender was better suited for this particular build rather than two TIE Defenders. But you guys might have a different view on that, so yeah, if you guys have any ideas for that, let me know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, this this build here focuses on two ships this time, an Imperial Shuttle piloted by Colonel Jendon, and a TIE Defender piloted by Rexel Brath. Um, I would say the purpose of this build is divide and conquer. Uh, the TIE Defender is going to be the one doing most of the fighting, while the Shuttle, he's going to be kind of sitting back and um, he'll be supporting the TIE Bomber from a distance, but should the, tie, but should the um, Rexler get into a bind, the shuttle can definitely come along and provide some covering fire and allow for Rexler to escape and find a better um, better line of attack. So with that said, let's look at the uh, the builds we have, the, the upgrades we have for the ships. Now, for a two-ship build, the upgrades on this are extensive. Like, my room, uh, he's, he's, he's pretty much made, the, he's pretty much um, stacked everything he could onto this build to maximize uh, each ship's effectiveness in battle. Um, and they get one of the good, one of the great things about this build is that even, um, even though this build is heavy, ha even though these two ships are heavily maxed out with their upgrades, uh, there's still six more points left on the, um, the squadron count, squadron build count, like these cost, um, the total squad point cost of this build is 94, which basically means that you will most, uh, most likely get initiative, um, in when you take this, to, when you take this build to the field. So with that said, let's focus on the first ship. The first ship we have is a TIE Defender, and it is piloted by Colonel Rexer Brath. He has a pilot skill of 8, he flies the Sinar Fleet System's TIE Defender, he has a very pretty balanced um, uh, stat card here, he's got an attack value of 3, a agility value of 3, a hull value of 3, and a shield value of 3. Uh, it's a pretty balanced card for a ship that was meant to counter the B-Wing. Um, he can take on the Focus, Log, and Barrel actions, he costs a whopping 37 squadron points to use. He's able to take on the Elite Pilot Talent, a Mounted Gun Upgrade, and a Missile Upgrade. And his ability states, After you perform an attack that deals at least one damage card to the Defender, you may spend a Focus Token to flip those cards face up. So, with Rexar Brass ability, this makes it so that if you attack and that you have at least one, uh, if you deal at least one attack that does hull damage, uh, you, if you have any Focus Tokens assigned to Rexler, you can spend that token to f to turn that hit into a critical hit, and then you have to resolve its effect. So that makes you know Rex. This basically makes Ren Rexlar. He's he's going to be doing a lot of yeah. He he's he's the one we he's going to be doing most of the attacking in this build. And when he attacks, he's going to make sh um the trick with this build. The trick with this um this build is uh keep your if you can keep your focus token until uh, after you attack. And then spend that focus token when you are able to deal hull damage, and then turn all the hull damage you deal into critical hits. So that's enough about the ship. Let's move on to the hull, the um, upgrades you've given him. For his first upgrade, his first upgrade is a modification hull upgrade. It states increase your hull value by one. So this basically increases Rexler Brass's, Brass's chances of survival when he's in a dogfight. This makes his total hull value four. So it disrupts the balance, but it may, it may, uh, disrupts the balance that his ship already possesses. But it allows him to take one extra hit, and yeah, it makes sure it'll, it'll make sure that he um, has a better chance of surviving in a dogfight. And he's gonna need he's gonna need every advantage he can get because if if you're not careful, this one tied defender is gonna be going up against say a swarm or an elite an elite uh, build, and yeah, he's the only one. He's pretty much the he's he's pretty much the forward line of defense in this build. Uh, to help him maximize his um, combat efficiency, the elite pilot, the elite pilot talent where my roommate is given him is Lone Wolf, which states, when attacking or defending, if there are no other friendly ships at range one to two, you may reroll one of your blank debt results. So, with Lone Wolf, you have to make sure that Rexlar is as far away from the shuttle as possible. As long as you stay within range three of the shuttle, 
and you attack or defend, you can reroll any of you, you can reroll one of your blank results that you get when either attacking a ship or defending it. And that applies to every weapon you use. It applies to both the ion cannon, which has an attack value of three and can be used at any range, one to three, and it states attack one ship. If the attack hits, the defender suffers one damage and receives one ion token, and then cancels all dice results. Again, Rexler um Lone Wolf affects all of Rexlar's um, attack, uh, attacks, his either be his primaries or secondaries. And with Ion Cannon, um, it's also affected by Rexlar's ability. So if you deal a hull damage when using an Ion Cannon, you can spend that focus and turn that regular one hit into a critical hit, as well as deal that extra Ion extra uh, ion charge. So um, yeah, definitely, if you can't, definitely keep that focus token handy. And um, for his missile, he's given concussion missiles which are basically a lessened down version of the proton torpedoes. They have a pilot's they have a attack value of 4 and can must be used at range 2 to 3. And they state spend your target lock and discard this card to perform this attack. You may change one of your blank results to a hit result. Um so with concussion missiles, any any blank results that you roll, you can immediately turn into a a regular hit result. And combining that ability with lone wolf allows you to get uh, two re-rolls. So basically, well, not so much a, re a second re-roll. Um, with a concussion missile, say your result is two hits and two blanks. Your concussion missile uh, turns one of those blanks into a hit, and then Lone Wolf will allow you to re-roll that uh, remaining hit for an extra chance to make sure that, um, that all of your um, your dice hit. So, yeah. That's, um... So Rexer Brath's advantage... Rexer Brath's, um, his job is to really go in there... Um, stay as far away from his partner as he can, attack with any and all of his weapons, and make make good event make good use of his lone wolf ability and his uh, standard ability. All while um. Uh, yeah, all while you know, and, and considering and also considering that the tie defender, the only real red maneuvers it has are sharp turns at the speed one. Um, it pretty much makes it impossible to uh, to get uh, to make this pilot stressed like of your own accord. Like enemy ships can find ways to stress your pilot, but you know if you use Rex or Breath effectively, stress will should shouldn't be that much of an issue. And now I move on to the next ship in the build, which is a Imperial shuttle piloted by Colonel Jenden. He has a pilot skill of six, and he flies the Lambda class Imperial shuttle. He has an attack value of three, an agility value of one a hull value of 5, and a shield value of 5. He can take on the focus and lock-on action. He costs 26 squadron points, and he's able to take on a sensors, a systems upgrade, a mounted gun upgrade, and two co-pilots. In his ability states, at the start of the combat phase, you may assign one of your blue target lock tokens to a friendly ship at range 1, if it does not have a blue target lock token. So in some regard, um, while Rex or Brath is going to be doing much of the attacking, there are some points where you're going to need there are some points where, say, um, um, yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be some points where um, you're gonna want to get the shuttle closer to our uh, Rexler in order to take full advantage of this ability because it states that at range one you can if the shuttle has a target lock it can swap its blue target lock over to an, uh, an uh, um, a friendly ship and um, yeah that's that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much the um, focus of that particular ability it's a useful ability. But in my opinion, I think it kind of defeats the purpose of having Rex or Wrath stay as far away as he can. Because even with the title card that's been given to him, the ability still states that you have to be at range 1 of your, of your friendly ship in order to take full advantage of it. So, enough about that, let's move on to his upgrades. His first upgrade is a title card called ST321. It is a title card meant only for the Lambda Shuttle. And it states, when acquiring a target lock, you may lock on to any enemy ship in the play area. So with this ability, with this um, title, this makes range, when, acquire, when you're acquiring a title lock, this, this makes range pretty much moot. Because you could be on the other end of the field, and the enemy ship could be like somewhere hitting an asteroid beyond range 3, and Jenin can still, get, still acquire a target lock. And, um... Um... Yeah, like... Yeah, like I said, it allows you to take um, target locks regardless of what range they are, which makes the shuttle even more effective. So I'd say for the strategy with this, um, 
keep the keep keep the shuttle and the tie and tie defender together for like the first few for the first couple of rounds and then once Jenin once you're able to take advantage of Jenin's ability after he gets a lock and spends it sends it over to um uh, Brath then have Brath break off and start attacking while um uh, Colonel Jenin kind of lingers around and um, uh, provides support any way he can for uh, Jenin. Also, another thing, uh, the shuttle is the only ship in the game that can actually make a stopping maneuver. Like it, it, you can you can make a zero maneuver, meaning that the shuttle does not move. It's the only ship in the game that can do that. So, uh, it's if if you want, it also, which it also take it also um helps make this modification even more effective the anti-pursuit lasers the anti-pursuit lasers again they're a modification meant only for large ships and it states after an enemy ship executes a maneuver that causes it to overlap your ship roll one attack die on a hit or critical result the enemy suffers one damage so this makes the whole stopping maneuver even more effective because um say the enemy is expecting you to move out of the way and you make a stop maneuver, so you stay in place, and the enemy ship risks risks that um, and basically the enemy ship now now risks the chance of running into you. And if he does run into you, the anti pursuit lasers will make short work of him by dealing one damage on every hit or critical result. So it's a pretty it, it's a good the anti pursuit lasers are a good point defense system for Jenin if any enemy decides to overlap him. Now for his other upgrades, for systems upgrade, we have an advanced we have advanced sensors. And they state, immediately before you reveal your maneuver, you may perform one free action. If you use this ability, you must skip your perform action step during this round. This, this ability is pretty good if, say, you're performing a maneuver that causes stress. Because when you're stressed, you're unable to perform any actions whatsoever. So, say, say you uh, need to get out of the way and need to perform a sharp turn 2 maneuver. To the shuttle, that's a red maneuver. And after you execute that maneuver, you won't be able to perform any actions because you'll be stressed. With advanced sensors, once you reveal your dial, you can you can use the advanced sensors to perform one of your actions as a free action and then move your ship. In exchange, you won't be able to use any of your other actions, but since uh, you won't be able to use another action, but since you're gonna be stressed, you know that that you know it evens it out. And now for his for AF's extra firepower. We have the heavy laser cannons. They have an attack value of four. They can be used at range two to three, and they state attack one ship. Immediately after rolling your attack dice, you must change all of your uh, hit critical results to hit results. So with the heavy laser cannons, in exchange for having a higher attack power than your standard lasers, uh, you cannot roll criticals. Like critical hits are are, are nullified with this ability. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much the weakness of that, and also the fact that it can also be, only be used at range two to three, it kind of leaves you with a bit of a kind of a donut arc, so to speak. Like you can't enemy any enemy ships at range one, you can't use the heavy lasers with. But um, then again, Colonel Jenin has an attack value of three, so that kind of makes up for it. And also adding the fact that he has anti pursuit lasers just in case they bump him. Yeah, he's got some pretty good um pretty good overall defense and offense so far. Uh, and next for his first. Uh, pilot, or uh, his called uh, crew, Skalot, we have Tactician. And Tactician states, after you perform an attack against enemy ship inside your firing arc at range 2, that ship receives a stress token. So, with Tactician, you want to stay at a pretty medium, you want to stay at medium range from your from your ship, from, from the enemy ship, in order to take full advantage, because, say you attack in conjunction, say you attack with your heavy lasers and deal some damage. Um... With Tactician, regardless if that misses, that attack misses, as long as you're at range 2, which is the minimum range you can fire out with the heavy lasers, that ship will receive a stress, which will hinder its ability to perform, to, um, it'll force it to form a, um, uh, a green maneuver, leaving it more vulnerable to, say, the shuttle or for Rexler, or it'll have to, um, perform a regular maneuver and not be able to form any actions in the next round. So, the Tactician's good for limiting your opponent's abilities to move maneuver and properly perform actions, which could be a great setup for when Rex or Brath, Brath takes to the uh, takes on the offensive. And for his next uh, crew slot, we have Saboteur. It says it has an action, a bold action uh, claim, which means it must be used during the action phase. And it states, choose one enemy ship at range one and roll one attack die. 
On a hit or critical hit result, choose one random face down card and assign that ship has assigned that ship and flip it face up and resolve it. So with Saboteur, you attack a ship, say with Colonel Jendon or with Rex or Wrath, you attack a ship and um, uh, that ship receives a hull damage. Uh, if Colonel Jendon is at range one of that ship, you can choose the Saboteur as an action, roll a dice, and if you get any hits or critical hit results, uh, you can choose one of the resulting um, face down cards and flip it face up and turn it into a critical hit. So if you're lucky, that, that the face down card could be a direct hit or it could be a console fire or a weapons or munitions malfunction, which, which eliminates the um, enemy's um, secondary weapon. And yeah, so this is, I would say I'm gonna call this build the Forgotten Aces pack. Because Rexar Brath was, he was the first ever to, I think he was the first ever to train and fly the TIE Defender as as um as a test pilot and later became a leader of Onyx Squadron. And then Colonel Jendon, while he wasn't really a pilot, he was a co-pilot. And Colonel Jendon's shuttle was the one that carried Darth Vader to the second Death Star while it was under construction so that he could check on the personnel and see how progress was doing. Um, the ship's, the build's strengths is the whole divide and conquer thing. Like, with this build, I recommend having Rexlar and Colonel Jendon stay close to each other so that Jendon can, uh, take advantage of his ability and transfer his lock-on over to Rexlar. And then once Rexlar spends that lock-on, the following round, Rexlar can kind of veer off and do whatever the heck he wants. And which will allow Rexlar to take advantage of his lone wolf ability. Um, and add to the fact that, uh, both these ships have a pretty high attack value, and the, the upgrades I've given them offer for even more of a punch and defensive capabilities makes this build pretty, you know, you might want to keep your distance when either attacking either of these ships in order to um, avoid the massive damage they can put out. The weaknesses of this build? Um, I'd say the only weakness is in the shuttle, because the shuttle has a very low agility value, and if you're and if you have a ship that has the outman if your enemy is using a ship that has the outmaneuver title upgrade, or is basically Wedge Antilles, uh, you are unable to roll any defense dice because um, Wedge Antilles reduces your agility at a value by one, and the outmaneuver card does the same thing, but they have to be outside your firing arc in order to do that. And with the shuttle, it's not that hard to stay out of the ship's firing arc because it's incredibly slow and clunky. Sure, I mean it's got lots of defense, but defense only lasts so long. I mean, you're going to need some form of uh, movement in order to escape your um, to escape your um, your target. So with the shuttle, in order to compensate for that weakness, I'd say perform a lot of stopping maneuvers to get the drop in your opponent and let them bump into you, and then use your anti-pursuit lasers to deal a crippling blow while Jendon goes and finishes them off. Or sorry, Jendon, sorry, Rex of Wrath finishes them off. So yeah, this is, um, this is my roommate's Forgotten Aces pack, or Forgotten Aces, um, uh, build. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Any constructive criticism is greatly appreciated. If you like, you may use this build in competitive or casual play, or if you want, you can tweak it or completely revamp it to your own uh, specifications. Like I said, my roommate used uh, two TIE Bombers prior to come up coming up with this build, so if you can find a way to make that one work, then kudos to you guys. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. This is Corbin22, signing out.